Hey guys, I'm Coxie. Three years ago, I obtained all pets in the game, and now it's time to run it back. A fresh new account with no stats or items, starting from scratch, with one goal in mind, speedrunning all pets as fast as possible. This is Funny Feelings. Good morning, we are back, baby. Last night was such a great night. We got our very first pet, we got Rocky Pet. It is time for some spring cleaning. It's time for some questing, some skilling, and I'm gonna sell off some of these bird's nests I've been working towards, 1.4 million GP. And roving elves are done. Now, this quest might seem irrelevant, but you do get a crystal bow from this quest, which crystal bow is a master clue requirement. It is a potential item from a fallow step. Am I the only one that just now realized Troll Romance is all about being a hired hitman to murder the boyfriend of a troll that just convinced me he deserves this other female troll more? Jagex, huh? You know, one of the main things that newer pet hunters really don't think about and plan for is having relaxing pets available to you at all times throughout your pet hunt. The literal worst case scenario is that you grind out all the chill pets at the start and then you're just left with the attention demanding high effort pets near the end. This causes a ton of pet hunters to burn out and I feel like it's my duty to let you guys know about this so it doesn't happen to you. Winter Todd to me is going to be my breakfast and coffee activity for the foreseeable future. I'll limit myself to 30 to 60 minutes a day while I'm waking up before I'm ready to get going with questing, skilling, or other high effort pets. To get the most rolls per hour, you'll want the Winter Todd Scouter plugin and Rune Light. Choose one of the four Winter Todd worlds to begin. A world with 60 to 65% is the sweet spot for a quick first game. Stay on the southeast side of the room to allow for optimal automatic pathing to the brazier, leaving you less susceptible to be hit by other players' snowfall who aren't hugging the wall. Cut an inventory of logs and start fletching on your way to the brazier. I'd leave a few logs unfletched and begin burning. Step away one tile when you see the snowfall animation. When a brazier goes out, light it and start fletching on the next game tick, giving you a free zero time fletch. If the pyromancer goes down, fletch the rest of your logs while running to a different brazier. When the winter tod is subdued, immediately hop to the next world 60% or above. An alt with heal other is ideal allowing you to have a near empty inventory on your pet hunter account. If the worlds are out of sync, use this time to open your crates and bank your loot. You can withdraw some redwood logs to light while running back into Winter Todd. Depending on your performance, you will average between two to three rolls per crate. The Phoenix drop rate is one in 5,000 rolls. With an update coming soon, at 200 mil fire making, this rate is adjusted to be 15 times more common. So every bit of experience counts when going dry. Good luck on your pet grind, and remember, east side is the best side. Good morning. It is a beautiful Friday outside, and we just got 83 fire make in. No, 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 no. There's just, there's literally, there's literally no f***ing way. <laughs> Oh my god, we're such a spoon f I'm not supposed to be cussing. We're such a spoon mother f Hey guys, it is future Coxie here. Stick around to the end of the video. I am excited to break down exactly how lucky I was and how many hours this saved me in the long run. It is officially time to get ready for BA, but wait. I will not allow any BA slander in this YouTube channel, okay? BA is such a great mini game. It is super old, but for how old it is, its complex mechanics and its team-oriented content is unmatched. The most efficient way to hunt Penance Queen is by selling BA leeches in the popular leech FCs. Back on Malfoy, I had a rank an attacker and defender, but on this account, I want to force myself to learn the hardest role, the role that I've always avoided, healer. 
I will be practicing healer for the next few days in order to hopefully pass a trial. These leech FCs pride themselves on efficiency and mitigating downtimes between rounds, which is why it ends up being the most high gambles per hour. While hunting this pet, I will also be making a lot of money that I will be able to invest into gear upgrades and skilling. Good God, the BA community are nerds. The last four days has been the closest I have felt to being in school since I graduated. I've been studying my wave codes, watching VODs, and having good healers backseat me through my learning process. During trials in these BAFCs, they'll basically watch and judge your performance on whether you meet the FC standards and can consistently play at a level that they want you to. Now, I might have failed a trial along the process, but I ended up passing last night and I am of officially a healer rank we could begin this pet hunt starting tomorrow this officially concludes day one of ba wow i miss this mini game so much and the first few gambles on the account this is a one in 1k pet rate is a the third longest pet in the game cash stack is up to 42 mil we're rich no man dude it is 6 a.m on a monday it is 6 a.m on a monday morning why are there people at willy altar with the money that i gained from the first day of ba i wanted to buy myself 70 prayer i thought waking up really early in the morning and going to wilderness altar would allow me to train prayer in peace but of course i thought wrong I ended up just using the POH world and getting 70 prayer really quickly by running bones to and from on my alt. Now that I have a cheeky little cash stack, I might as well train construction, 50 construction fly on on in. I know I'm going to need higher later for quests, so might as well get some done. Forsaken Tower completed. This is the final Zaya quest, the final quest to finish Architectural Alliance. This allows me to fill up my entire memoir book and have really good teleports all around Zaya. And 70 fletching cheeky little free levels while I'm questing. Oh yeah, Troll King. Give me that head. Easy fight with these stats. That is also going to conclude Fremi Isles. New best in slot, Nezzy Helm. The upgrades, baby. They are flying on in. 12.25 PB. These are only going to get faster as I get better at healer. And this is exactly why doing leeches is so good for the pet rolls. I'd like to get Fremi Exiles done sometime in the near future. Fremi Exiles has a 60 fishing requirement. So I'm going to fish for a little bit today. Just hit 58. Off to barb fishing we go and 61 fishing i decided to stay until 61 because this unlocks dragon harpoon from here on out all of our fishing is probably going to be done at two tick swordfish which is the best rate for fishing pet you know i think dragon harpoon is actually the first item we have that has a decent special attack so i'm gonna go ahead and buy light bearer ring now too while i'm at it light bearer ring recharges your special attack twice as fast it's a very very useful item in pvm and also in some skilling cases hey 70 smithing flying on in this is a song of the else requirement out of the way nice and easy we just got 69 fishing nice first time on the account with over 100 mil cash stack it looks so beautiful ba money is rolling in it is time to start buying upgrades first on the agenda let's just get the whip out of the way I think I've already done about 50 torsos worth of BA, but I'm finally acquiring my own. Looks good, feels good, very big DPS upgrades. I'm going to be using this thing for a while. Oh, baby. Oh my god. You would not f me if you saw me in the wildy. We are officially 10 days playtime. Claws have been bought. I decided to go ahead and get myself D Defender. The alts here are spec transferring, so we can have a ton of claw specs to speed this up. There she is, D Defender. 450 KC. Wow, 450 on the dot from Bronze to Defender. Pretty quick. This took no time at all with spec transfer alts. I decided to give myself a reason to train more smithing. Kandarin Hard Diary, I know I'm going to get done. It does require 75 smithing. Only thing I'm missing now is 70 defense and piety. Peace, Sir Lancelot. Night waves are done. Free combat XP. Piety and chivalry unlocked. Two very important prayers.
There she is, another heal PB, 12-11. Gonna keep pushing. I am really excited for that sub-12. All right, stats are starting to look good. I have an elite from BA Gamble sitting in my bank. I turned it into a master clue. I was kind of just sitting on it because I didn't have three clues stacked up, but my account's doing pretty good right now. So let's start the first master clue. Let's see how far we get. There's no better time than now to talk about every pet hunter's worst nightmare, the Bloodhound. The main reason for this is the difficulty in actually getting pet rolls. Bloodhound is a reward from Master Caskets with a 1 in 1000 drop rate, which doesn't sound too bad until we consider how these caskets are obtained. Master Clues can be received by handing in easy, medium, hard, and elite clues to Watson on Zaya. Easy to hard can be obtained reasonably through opening Implings, though elites can be a bit more tricky. There are two efficient ways to obtain elite clues, passively through other pet hunts and by opening Dragon Implings at a rate of 1 in 50. Unfortunately, Dragon Implings are insanely expensive. At current GE prices, opening a Dragon Impling jar gives 117k worth of loot, but it costs 376k to buy. This means that opening Dragon Impling jars marks an average loss of 259k, meaning you'd have a loss of 12.9 million GP just to get one elite clue from Dragon Impling jars. To buy, let's say, a thousand elites worth of DMs, this would reach almost 13 billion GP. Instead, I will be rushing Master Clue requirements early on in this series so we can obtain our Elite Clues passively while we hunt other pets. As of 52 pets, if you were to go perfectly on rate for both every pet and Elite Clue drop from that boss, you'd end up with 1,111 Elite Clues. With the Elite Combat Achievement Diary, you're awarded 5% extra chance for an Elite Clue everywhere in the game, ending with 1,167 Elite Clues. 1,167 Master Clues gives you a 68.8% .8 chance to obtain Bloodhound. This should prove the importance of not wasting clues and why I will be prioritizing all Master Clue stats, quests, and untradeable gear requirements before I start any PVM. We are still on our first clue. We are making good progress. Barrel Chest Anchor Step. That is quest locked, but I can do it. Okay, I lied to you guys, forgive me. In order to wield a barrel chest anchor, I actually do great brain robbery. Within great brain robbery, I have to do rum deal and rum deal requires 42 slayer. But don't worry, I can knock out two birds with one stone with this. The final requirement for Kandarin hard is piety. For piety, I need 70 defense. So I can utilize this time to get 42 slayer and 70 defense knocking out both of these simultaneously. I'm going to be doing this at Wilderness Slayer because it is very good Slayer points per hour, which I need Slayer points to even begin Slayer. I need to build a good block list. I need to get my extends. I need to get my Slayer helmet, etc. Wilderness Slayer is also beneficial because you can take advantage of Wilderness Weapons. Wilderness Weapons have very good bonuses inside the Wilderness. They hit very hard, even with bad stats, and they give you good combat XP per hour. No, my footage from today corrupted and today was such a big day. Today we hit 1500 total. I did end up getting 42 Slayer and 70 defense. I unlocked Piety. I got Kandarin easy through hard done, which allows me to have the Sears agility teleport and 10% extra points inside BA. And we did complete our first master as well after we did rum deal and did the barrel chest anchor step. We had one Joral step and that was it. Very easy master clue. It was a six stepper. Unfortunately, we didn't get any good loot, but first master clue done on the account. Let's go. Uh, yo, 70 HP. Morning's end part one completed. It is time for the clue. Master casket number two flying on in. Ah. 70 magic while working my way towards 70 agility for Sot. Yo, this is actually big. Okay, very important for the overall account. Our Vagora is in Edgeville Dungeon. It's not in Rogue's Castle. Anything but Rogue's Castle. It's not the best one. Slayer Tower is the best, but it's not Rogue's Castle. Third Master Casket. Dude, I cannot believe how lucky we are getting with these clue steps so far. So many Joral steps, so many Biables. No Sherlock hard skilling steps so far. This is insane with our stats. We already have three Masters done. That is one more torso payment collected. And 75 high gambles as well now. Whew. You might think Earth Warriors is a skip task, but for my specific situation, it is absolutely not. 
Earth Warriors drop a champion scroll, and a champion scroll is needed for Music Cape, which is the biggest quality of life item, in my opinion, for Master Clues. Therefore, I will be doing all of these tasks. Dream Mentor done. This was insanely easy on a main account when you can buy good gear. Holy. Our first sub 12. We have been healing for a little bit less than two weeks now, and we finally got our first sub 12. We got this sub 12 by one tick. Oh boy, good God almighty. If you trust me on anything, please do not fight this boss with 60 range in an MSB. That fight, I literally think took five minutes. Beneath Curse Sands done, TOA unlocked, and 69 agility. Nice. 70 agility. Another Song of the Elves requirement out of the way. Lumberjack is a quick and easy master clear requirement out of the way. Only takes 15 minutes. Shout out Swampletics for the guide. Love you, dude. Couldn't have done it without you. We are continuing to trek through all the quests. I can just smell the quest point cape. It is so close. We are doing night at the theater right now and technically first theater blood completed. Another soap requirement out of the way. We have been continuing to BA a little bit every day. Cash stack is looking really healthy. I'm going to go ahead and buy myself 77 prayer now. Get the levels for Augur and Rigor out of the way. No, I swear I did not stay up until 4 a.m. Just so that I could train prayer in peace. But I literally ran into one PKer in the last hour and a half and I love it. And 65 Slayer. We are four Slayer levels away from Monkey Madness 2 requirement, which is 69. We have 75 attack, and we are one defense level away from 75 defense. 75 defense and attack allows us to equip a Bulwark, which is an insanely good weapon for training Slayer, especially with spec transfer alts. Uh-oh, a Sherlock step, and he gives us a rune dart. That is 81 Fletching. I can do 76 with a plus five boost. Looks like we're gonna quest and fletch. I needed some quests to do where I was running around a lot, able to train fletching, decided to knock out Architectural Alliance. Gives me a lot of great teleports in the game. Good one to get done. AKD done, thralls unlocked. Very, very useful for this account. There she is, 76 Fletching. We can now boost for Rune Dart and continue on with our Master Clue. Here we go. 70 Hunter purely from Birdhouses. We started Birdhouses at one. I am probably gonna do Birdhouses all the way to 80. I don't really see myself ever training Hunter until I can get to Irby. Working our way towards Monkey Madness 2 requirements. 75 hit points, Zenites unlocked, massive. Here I was, geared up, ready to go with Monkey Madness 2, and I did not realize there was a 70 crafting requirement, but nice and easy, there she is. Gonna go ahead and buy an Anguish 2. Pretty big DPS upgrade. You know what? Screw it, let's just get all of them. Dex as well, two really big range upgrades. These are gonna help with the Monkey Madness 2 boss fight. I ended up doing a tiny little bit of Slayer past 69, because I knew we were so close to 70 range. This is gonna give us Black Dehyde. Big, big range level. Off we go to Monkey Madness 2. Wow, nice and e surprisingly nice for only 70 range. I am now a friend of the monkeys. Monkey Madness 2 is done. Best place to chin in the game is unlocked. I'm tired of not having a fire cape, so I'm gonna chin myself 80 range and I'm gonna go get an upgrade. I'm gonna tell you guys a story. As long as everyone promises not to make fun of me, okay? When I got my first fire cape, I was around the age of 10, and I'm not kidding, it literally took me like a week to a week and a half. It was the point that my parents knew that I was going for it, and I vividly remember when I got my first fire cape, my mom bought me a cake to celebrate after because she thought it was like the biggest thing in the world, which it was at the time, but fire cape obtained on this account, new best in slot, new gear upgrade, let's go. Oh no. Oh no. Sherlock has been so nice to me. Okay, well, we got Redwood Log. Good morning. It is 7 a.m. The sun is not even up yet. Last night, I got stuck on a Redwood Log Sherlock stuff. I was debating if I wanted to just hard grind it out or separate the skilling into a few hours a day. I decided to make a little challenge for myself and go for the current woodcutting day record to see if I'm able to go from 75 to 87 woodcutting. This is around 2.7 million XP in under 24 hours. Good luck to me. I'll need it. 
Good luck to my wrists. And here we go. Oh, yes, there she is. 87 woodcutting. We smashed the day record. I guess there's just not many people woodcutting in the game right now, but um, oh, we can finally continue on with our master clue. And master clue number six flat. Oh, there's no shot. Oh my God, 13 mil master clue on my sixth one. Ring of coins, Jagex is rewarding us for putting in the work at the teak trees. And Prospector Helm Bot, we need full Prospector for a Master Clear requirement. We are three out of four Prospector pieces, 40k mining XP left until I can start DS2. The 60k mining XP quest reward from DS2 will push me to 70 mining, which is our final requirement for Song of the Elves. Dragon Slayer 2 completed. Gosh, I love this quest. With good armor and rigor, this boss fight was made so simple. Just a piece of cake. Such a great quest, fun quest, but... Uh, Jagex, rest in peace to Bob. Who's the cutest little guy in the world? I'll never forget you. Song of the Elves is underway, and oh, time for everyone's favorite part, the light puzzles. I honestly hope every single person had to do this quest on release because I am not exaggerating. Without quest helper and without guides, this small portion of the quest took the average person four to six hours to complete. I remember on day of release, so it took me, I genuinely think around 10 hours for the full quest completion. It was such a great day. I do not regret any of it. There's Saren completed, and this is gonna finish up so. We now have access to Prif, which gives us access to two new pets, Zalcano and Corrupted Gauntlet. This also gives us access to Divine Pots, Crystal Armor, and Bofa. Massive quest with massive upgrades. Please don't ask me why it's taken this long, but finally, full graceful, another Master Clue requirement out of the way. Oh boy, another Master Clue, another Sherlock step. Please be nice to me, please. Oh boy, that is 85 Slayer. All right, well, here we go. First order of operation before we really start grinding out Slayer, I gotta get myself an MA2 cape. Of course, I'm gonna go for Guthix cape, the best cape. This gives me extra max hits. Barrage Slayer is massive, so this is going to be a very big upgrade for the account. Yo, 82 magic. You might be sat there thinking, what is so special about 82 magic? Well, with the saturated heart, it gives a plus 12 magic boost and it stays for five minutes. This unlocks barrage on the account. DPS has been increased a ton. A 75 slayer. This unlocks gargoyles. This unlocks grotesque guardians, which does unlock another pet. Five more levels till 80. At 80, we can give it a plus five boost to continue our master clue step. We are just doing some nighttime wildy slayer and 80 attack that unlocks rapier. Oh my lord, it is finally over. No more wilderness slayer on this account. Oh, that feels good to be done. We finally have enough points to get our slayer helmet. Um, we have enough points to build a good block list and still have a good amount left over for skips. Wow, I am not going to miss Wilderness Slayer. Let me tell you, that is not fun. 80 Slayer officially done. Two days of a grind. 70 to 80 done in just under two days. All right, reanimate Abyssal Demon time. Getting these pies, making them on an Iron Man is so bad. They have the weirdest ingredients, but being a main is really nice. Can just buy them right off the GE. Please give me a nice Joral step. Easy. In the top left corner, you can see that we have a master clue requiring us to go to Weiss and speak to Snowflake, which means we need to do Making Friends with My Arm, one of the few quests I still have not done. Everything is falling into place. Just get this quest done, continue on with the master clue. Easy going. <laughs> Please ignore this atrocity you are seeing on stream. Moving around stuff like this in Rune Light definitely does help out the quality of life of one tick cooking crombwans. 85 cooking, 85 cooking is a requirement for Infernal Harpoon. Infernal Harpoon is very big for the efficiency of Temple Ross. I will be soloing Temple Ross Firefighter Method to get my fishing level up to the Master Clue requirement of a Sacred Eel. There is 55 runecrafting. 55 runecrafting allows us to finish off Quest Point Cape officially. 
Today is the day we will have zero quests left. Fremi Exiles is wrapping on up. This means a new helmet upgrade. Great quest. It was one of the final quests I needed to get done because of the rune crafting requirement, but it is finally completed. 289 quest points. We are almost there. Muspa. You are no match for me. So free. All right. Quest point cape has been. The bone sack is the only answer to this, by the way. The only answer. Ragged Bone Man was my last quest, like uh, most people's are. And that completes quest point cape for us. Quest completed 156 days playtime 18 days 19 hours stats are looking good one away from 1800 and uh account is coming along yo class is in session it is stats time baby buckle up i'll make this quick and easy phoenix pet drop rate is one in five thousand rolls winter todd hopping is roughly 45 rolls per hour making this approximately 111 hour pet I obtained my pet on 455 rolls and gained roughly 3.1 million XP at Winter Todd. I was very lucky on this pet. I was approximately 11 times under the drop rate, which falls into the 8.7 percentile. In other words, 91.3% of people would still be stuck at the ice prison hunting for Phoenix pet by 455 rolls. A beautiful way to visualize this, courtesy to R, is through a density graph. I programmed the simulation to illustrate at what KC 5,000 different players received Phoenix Pet. Taking our 5,000 pet hunters into consideration, we can paint a picture of how frequently players get the pet. The red line is marked at 455 rolls, the number of which I obtained Phoenix. The area under the curve to the left of the red line is the people who are luckier than I was, a very small portion which would equal out to be 8.7% of the overall graph. The small lines under the x-axis is called a rug. Each line indicates an individual data point from when a player got the pet. You can see out of the 5,000 people who obtained Phoenix, there are a few extremely unlucky people with over 30,000 Winter Todd rolls. This is roughly six times or more of the drop rate. One unfortunate soul actually managed to go more than 55,000 rolls for the pet, exceeding 11 times the drop rate. One more fun fact about this graph before we wrap it up. In RuneScape, you have roughly 63.3% chance to obtain the pet before its drop rate and 86.5% chance to get it before double the drop rate. This means that out of the 5,000 people who obtained Phoenix pet, 675 people on this graph had 10,000 or more Winter Todd rolls. We definitely dodged a bullet getting this pet early. It's been just under 30 days since Rocky Pet, and in the last month, we have made an insane amount of progress. We've clocked almost 12 days of in-game playtime, 584 total levels have been gained. We've completed 56 quests and obtained our quest point cape. The account is up to nine Master Clue KC and steadily chipping away at more Master Clue requirements. The bank value is over 500 mil with 100 plus gambles on Penance Queen Pet, the third longest pet in the game. And to close everything out, we've obtained our second pet in RuneScape, putting us at two out of 51.